It's McCabe. We are at the Amp Radio Studios in the Bud Light Lime Lounge today yeah. with my man, Big Sean. How What's are up, you? Man? What's up, I'm chilling Dude. up in the Bud Light Lime Lounge, Yes. Man. If you want one, we can... It's pretty limey. Yeah. We can yeah. refresh you with it. Of course, man. Um, we were actually talking about some refreshing moments. You mm-hmm. just had your Michael Jackson moment not As too long say ago, so. a few days ago. You, yeah. you were on the roof of a car mm-hmm. in New York City. Mm-hmm. Um, Tell us about what happened, because you were expecting like two to three hundred people. Yeah, they were expecting like two to three hundred people at this in store I did at the Adidas store, and then it ended up being like four or five thousand people, and it was pandemonium. The commissioner of the NYPD came out and was like, "What the hell is going on?" And was like super <laughs> mad. It was a it was a What's crazy even like moment. What's going through your head at that moment when you're just looking at everyone and they're chanting your name? I mean, when you come to a, a signing like that expecting two hundred people and you have thousands, it was it was a moment, man. Like. You know, I worked hard, man. I know a lot of artists work hard, but I really worked my ass off, man. Just as, in this day and age of all these new at rappers and just people coming out, man, to really try and stand out and to be recognized, that's just an honor. You know what I'm right. saying? And just from putting out mixtape after mixtape to, you know, start my own movement, starting from doing shows to 20 people to like 2,000 to 3, 4, 5,000 people to 20,000 people now. And even more, it's just incredible, man. So it, it's a great experience. I'm glad my grandma can say she's proud of me finally. That's you great. Know, it's, grandma it's says she's proud. That's cool. Yeah, that's <laughs> cool, man. That's I mean, you best. have you have like one of those, you know, dream stories for an artist. You met Kanye at a radio interview, yeah. and you freestyled for him. Uh-huh. Um, and and you talk about it on Memories Part Two. You put in there, and you were kind of nervous. Yeah. Um, Tell us about that moment. Take us back to, you know, that and how you just, you had the, you know, balls to go do that. Man, it was crazy because when I was 16, my grandma gave me my first car and I started doing this radio show every Friday where MCs would come together and battle each other. And whoever would win the battles would get to rap on air a verse or two. It was a show called the Friday Night Cypher. So you get to rap on air like over the whole city on the radio, like a verse or two. And it was every Friday night. I ended up doing that show every week, became a regular contestant on it. I did it for like a year straight and got a good relationship with the station. So from my junior year and a senior year in high school, Kanye was down at the station promoting his album on a Saturday morning. Now the show oh. I did was every Friday. Right. So he was promoting his album on a Saturday and I was cashing my check at the bank, a $120 check. I was a telemarketer. It was the worst job ever. It was whack as hell. So I've done that. You know, my best friend calls me. Yeah, I think we've all done it once in a while. So my best friend calls me and is like, yo, you listening to the radio? I'm like, no. Nah. He's like, man, Kanye down at the station. Yo, man, if you go down there and rap for him, he'll probably sign you, dog. He'll probably sign you if he just heard you, man. <laughs> and I was like, man, that sounds stupid. And then I thought about it for like 12 seconds. and I was like, man, that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> so I like dropped everything I was doing. I went home to pick up the CD I've been selling around high school. You know, drove down to the, st- my homie, one of my best friends, other best friends gave me $20 to drive down there because I was flat broke. Got to the station. Since I've been doing that show, they let me right in because they knew me. Right. And then I said, I left my phone there last night. I lied and was like, I left my phone here because that was Saturday and I was there Friday night. So they were like, all right, go get your phone. And then I went in the back, back offices where I thought Kanye would be at. And I, you know, sure enough, he was there. I got past his security guard, his road manager. I guess they thought I worked there and I didn't shook his hand and told him like yo man you like you my hero i ride to school listening to you i'm an aspiring rapper and he was like all right keep it up keep it up and i'm like wait you know he was about to leave and i'm like wait man before you go can i rap for you and he's like i don't really have time i gotta go <laughs> i'm like please man i like ride to school listen to you like my hero and i like just trying to make him feel bad so then he was like all right well you got 16 bars you can rap while we're walking out the station so you know, 16 bars is like the equivalent of like a verse on a song. Right. So I started rapping. Do you remember what you I wish I wish I did. Everybody asked me that, but it was like five years ago now. Uh-huh. So. Does I, Kanye remember? No, nah, he that, doesn't that remember. Because I mean, it, it was like freestyle mixed with like written stuff I had mixed with like so many just raw emotions, like, you know, straight running off of just like, you know what I'm saying? Right. The moment. So as I was rapping, he was just like, you know, he was hearing it, but it was what it was. And then as soon as we got to the entrance slash exit of the station, he stopped. And he was really bobbing his head hard, like he was really feeling it. And then I heard him, he was like ad lib it. He'd be like, ooh, snaps are oh, damn, you know, after like punchlines and stuff. So I was so nervous. I just remember rapping towards the ground. And that 16 bars ended up turning into like 10 minutes straight. And um, 
you know, that's like how the, and they took my CD and was listening to it all that day. And that's how the initial contact started. Right. And then you stayed in contact and you mm-hmm. had him like critique your music. And yeah. Send the music back still and still to forth. have someone of Kanye's, you know, stature to be able to stay in contact with you. I mean, that's just crazy. Crazy, man. It that's, was crazy. And it just takes off from there. I mean, yeah, it took a lot of work, man. I gave up everything. I graduated high school like a 3.7. I was ready to go to school. I was ready to go to college and like have all the like sex with all the fine girls and live on my own and well, like, be in gonna, my dorm. You're gonna be doing just fine. Well, yeah, college but you know what females, I'm saying? Just right. like the college life uh-huh. and just be on my own and stuff. And I didn't do that. And I instead I tried to focus on what was like uh wasn't even a promise like Kanye didn't say he wanted to sign me and I didn't go to school I was just like man I think he's gonna sign me so I'm not gonna go to school right and was relying on my faith and uh it took a couple years after high school man to get signed to him but it finally happened and I really worked my ass off man so it's so tight and the moments like those where I was like broke as hell spending all my mom's money all my grandma's money on studio sessions and just like having to rely on my faith like those times make it these times now so much better. It, it it's a huge payoff, and and for an artist yeah. like you, I mean, congratulations on it. Thanks, you know? man. And, and now, if someone were to come up to you and freestyle for you, would happens you all the time. Give them like the time of day. I mean, do you stop and you're like, all right, for sure. I always do, man. I, that's one of those things where now it's like pay it forward. I mean, you had Kanye kind of you know latch onto you and help you out. Now it's like you know. I think that would just be bitch assness if I didn't, you know. So it's like I always stay and listen. Even when I'm tired, even when I'm like, don't feel like it, I just always, you always gotta just hear somebody out, man. Cause I don't know how Kanye was feeling when he, when I was rapping for him, but uh-huh. he heard me out, and you know. Well, now working with, you know, the dude you looked up to, Kanye, and you have yeah. your first label album, Finally Famous, wow. which is out 628. Um, I listened to it yeah. last night. It's a, it's a great listen all the way through. Good summer record as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, you got Chris Brown on here, John Legend, Mm -hmm. Kanye, uh, Wiz Khalifa. How, for a first album, I mean, that's just in itself. It's crazy, crazy. right? Sheesh. You know, how how do you, I mean, are you working with Kanye and you're you're picking the people you want to work with to have? Yeah, all the features just made, like, sense creatively. I didn't try and get, like, features just to stunt. Like, me and Wiz Khalifa have been friends for years. Before he was blowing up, before I was blowing up. So it was tight to see him, like, blow up so big, too. Right. And he tells me the same thing. So, you know, it's tight to just have, see my friends and then, you know, working with my idol Kanye and then even Chris being one of my good friends. It's funny because my last with Chris, that's a song I didn't even want to do. And it, at first it was, it's produced by No ID and he gave me the beat and was like, yo, man, you need to write a song to this beat. And it was about half as produced up as it is now. Mm-hmm. So it was like the skeleton of the beat. And I'm like, man, I'm not doing this. It sounds soft. I don't want to do this, this and that. He's like, man, do you want to be a mixtape rapper forever? Or do you want to make music people could really dance to, live to, have fun to, play at barbecues, at pool parties? And just, and I was like, man, you're right. So I went home and wrote that song. And I wrote it from front to back. I wrote all the choruses, the bridges, and everything. And it originally was all me singing. Right. And then I played it for Chris Brown because he was one of my homies. And he was just like, was going nuts over it. And that's when I realized that it was a great song. And then I was like, yo, you might as well just hop on it. And then he hopped on it. And it was just like, was out of Wait. there. 10 yeah. times better. Yeah. Did, he, did he add anything else? Just a, to he it? had it just a little bit. No, better. yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, you know? no, no. You know, he Big just, Sean, he had it. He had it fine. <laughs> it was just fine. No, I was just playing. No, he had it. Um, he didn't really add anything to it. He just sang my parts. Mm-hmm. But he sounds great on it, though. Dude, it's, it's a blast here at Amp Radio. A lot of requests for it. So congratulations on That's the last. Tight. Keep That's requesting tight. it. And it's yeah, paying off please. to you because I'm looking at all the bling. Yeah. Dude, tell us about. Yeah, I don't know, Nicole. one of your most prized possessions we have here. Well, Kanye gave me these Jesus pieces. I got a couple more, too. These are just gold Jesus pieces. Uh huh. And I have some with diamonds in it, but this is real Biggie-ish, real Biggie-inspired, you know. Uh, then I got the pile chains. I got another one of these. These are f- from Japan, my Solid. homie. So, like, how much is, like, one of these worth? One of these? Yeah. Well, the ones with diamonds in them, I don't know how much these are worth, but the ones with diamonds in them are worth, like, 25000 <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't buy him though, man. He gave me five thousand. So. Yeah, like my man. car. This is my. Car. You're wearing like five Ka- cars. Kanye's so balling, man. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. Well, um, the album finally famous. Mm. You know, what do you 
want to stand out as as an artist? What do you want to you know people to remember you as and as I, you continue to grow? I just want to be remembered for somebody who really um, did what they wanted to do in life, man, and really did what you. I want to be the example of doing what you love is always the right thing to do, man. Like I'm not at least I can say I won't be 50, 60 years old wishing I woulda, coulda, shoulda did something, and that's like the message I want my music to exude, like to always follow your heart. Because your heart will always lead you, man, to your, like, pot of gold or to your lottery or whatever you're trying to go in life. And even if it's, like, you never get there, man, at least you failed at something. You failed at doing what you love to do as opposed to something you don't want to do, man. And people call me stupid. You know, when I told my fifth grade teacher, I went back to visit her and told her, you know, I don't think I'm going to go to college, man. I think I want to do music. She told me I was throwing my life away. She told me it was, like, the, stu- the dumbest decision I could make, especially because I graduated with honors. And now the same teacher wants me to come back and speak to the school for the kids. Really? And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that because, like, nobody can see a vision like you. And it's always the right thing to follow your heart, man, always. And I think, I mean, you're smart that way. You, again, you graduated with honors. I mean, you knew what you were doing. You know, you pursued it. And yeah. it's not like you were just throwing something away. And, and I mean, it, it yeah. was a smart move. Just well, I would just hate to look back and be like, man, I, I wonder what would have happened, you right. know? Well, yeah. it's happening now. Uh, Finally Famous is out 628. Can you take us out with a flow? Do people ever put you on the spot for a freestyle? Yeah, people always put me on the spot for a freestyle. Do we have to, like, I give say, you a, a um, beat? I say, all I get is air time. You messing with me on my I don't care time. 30 bottles splashing. You can tell I just got drafted. Me and Vito passing. Girls, man, I'm just calling that an assist. Assist. <laughs> I'm just calling that an assist. Um, fresh up out the ashes, Detroit classic, Eminem got the masses, Trick Trick got the passes, from that motor, motor, yeah, that motor be the fastest, call it Motor City, cause you're most likely to crash, but we airline living, cause we be around them birds, boy, be around them birds, boy, and always drop bags full of Detroit players, where we love to pop tags, and if you pop off at the mouth, then for sure them toes are getting tagged, you're rich. I say, I put the city on my back, so that way if I fall, I'm crowd surfing the map. Yeah, it's just a little something. <laughs> Big Sean, Detroit's yeah. finest. Thank you so much for stopping by Amp Radio. You're more nah, than welcome thanks for having to be me, here man. anytime. Yeah. Okay. Big Sean. Follow him on Twitter, at Amp, Big Sean. Amp Radio, man. You guys are some real Gs. Thanks for supporting the new movement, man, the hip-hop, having your ears tuned to the streets. Man, that's real big. For sure. Appreciate that. Thank you, man. Yeah. Appreciate it.